without the bio enzyme you cannot do a bio digester it's not true another question that i've been asked by a few of those who have joined my bio digester construction school where i teach them online how to construct a bio digester is whether the country that they are living in some of them are in uganda others are in tanzania all the way in sudan and then in nigeria also i have a lot of of, of students who have who live in Nigeria and they are part of my course. The question that I some of them ask is whether the materials that are, are used in the biofuel or the biodegradable waste by the construction is something they can easily source where they are living. And I say the reason why the biodigesters became prominent or they became very popular is because the original idea was that you can be locally sourced materials anywhere you are living here on the continent. It's supposed to be an economically friendly technology. So it means that your, your building materials, especially, which is where the most of the people have problem with, is where the issue is. And then the building problems for the digester bed are locally sourced materials. So then uh, I speak about the use of hay, that's a green grass, the one that usually they feed to the horses. The hay is very, very good for biodegradation of the human waste in a biodigester. I spoke about that one. And of course, I've also spoken about sawdust. Some people also use the more POP with a mixture with the bioenzyme and stuff. And then it all is in the biodegradation process. But the key for us that I've come to realize and use for the past two, three years is that the coconut fiber treated one, of course, is your best bet when it comes to the human waste treatment with biodigesters, that's the biodegradable waste biodigesters. The reason is that in the, the microorganisms are easily generated through that technology and that sometimes you don't even need the vermi composting system which the dyes are biofuel biodigesters use you can use the coconut husk and it will still give you that necessary effect it will still give you that that biodegradation that you need for the human waste to decompose in a biodigester like i've said severally and over the the course of this channel and over the my educational videos that i've done the key part for a biodigester is to know where the wastewater is going. I mean, that's the ultimate thing. If you know where your wastewater is going, then you have half of the problem. So people call me and they say, I want to do a biodigester. And I ask them a simple question. Do you have any idea of where the wastewater must be disposed? And he say, if that's the reason I'm calling you, I'm like, no, but that's really the reason. It should be part of your plan from the beginning when you do your construction. Where you will your kitchen wastewater go? Where is your bathroom wastewater going? And of course, where is your human waste that does the WC or the full flash in this wastewater also going? If you have solutions for this and then you are considering a biodigester, then you know that you are in good hands. And whoever comes is the key question that you ask them, what do you think we should manage the water and how we should control this water? So there are several options available. There's the so-called pit where you can be buried on the ground. That's if they are the type of soil that the digester will be constructed or how good it is. If it's clay and if it's water work, obviously, then you know that you need another option, either to do a soak away and then either get a bigger drainage and channel the waste water into it. If you do get a soak away done, then you should also consider the possibility of having it pumped out periodically because then obviously the water is not going to soak and the ground will not be able to drain it very well. So those are some of the, a few of the options that you have when it comes to the toilet wastewater management that you have to consider when you want to install a bio digester. Bioenzyme, I do get people call me saying that they need bioenzyme for their toilet waste or for their bio digester that they are constructing. And now sometimes I'm honest with them. I used to sell the bioenzyme. I used to have some, I mean, I know a few guys in the town who are selling it. I know people can make money from it because then most people tell you that Without the bioenzyme, you cannot do a biodigester. It's not true. <laughs> you can do a biofuel biodigester without the bioenzyme. All you need is to get the right material and then the right gradient that you need, the right level for your water to get out of the digester. And of course, where the wastewater is going. If there's water seeping back the digester, it doesn't matter the amount of bioenzyme that you use the digester will still be rendered ineffective. So if you're interested in learning how to control a biodigester, or if you are you are getting a biodigester down for your house, your key issue must not necessarily be the, the chemical that they are using in the digester. 
Your key issue is how to get the wastewater out of the digester at any point in time. If that one is done and you get the water out constantly out of the digester, your digester will last you a lifetime. That one, anybody who gives you that kind of guarantee, I will back it up and say yes. Because then the human waste will be degraded by itself. And then any tissue that is in it, if it's that one, should also be biodegradable. And all those things will then decompose. And there will be virtually nothing left in the digester that you have constructed for your house. And then you come and testify to you that my digesters actually work. And they're actually giving you that needed peace of mind that you need for your house. We are almost hitting 10,000 subscribers. And I want you to be part of this community. Hit the bell notification as well when you do subscribe. And any new video that we do, you'll be the first to be notified of me. Until the next video, I will see you when I see you.